Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Simon with Social Flight. We have a really exciting presentation tonight about the Carbon Cup experience, and uh, I'm particularly fond of this, this aircraft. I think it's really uh, an impressive one that, that you'll certainly be able to see. And, and as you'll hear, you'll also have some opportunities around the country to go see one at your local airport or at least one that's, that's pretty close to you, and, and we're going to give you some information about that as well. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, I'd like to welcome you to the Social Flight community. Uh, Social Flight is the free web and mobile app that's dedicated to supporting general aviation. We do that by gathering all the events happening in aviation and making them available at socialflight.com and through our mobile apps on Apple and Android devices. Our mission is to give pilots like yourselves more reasons to get out there and fly, and it is all completely free and made possible by companies such as Cubcrafters from tonight's presenter. Uh, tonight's presenter, Mark Keniston. Mark is Cubcrafter Sales Manager for the Northeast and Great Lakes regions. And he'll give you some background on himself, but it's very uh, fascinating. It includes uh, 43 years of flying in Cubs and, and other tail dragger aircraft, a background in avionics, all sorts of very interesting stuff. And so we are very excited. And uh, just a couple quick notes. A uh, recording of tonight's presentation will be available on socialflight.com generally by tomorrow, and uh, we'll send you a link for that in the email after the presentation. Uh, feel free to post your questions using the Q&A or the chat feature, and we'll try to answer those uh, at the end of the presentation. We'll have a section where we can do that, and we can answer those questions just uh, by you sending us the text. Uh, one more question, uh, uh, note regarding audio. Um, you can do it on your PC, and if you do that, uh, use the listen-only feature by dropping down in the audio options, or you can dial in, which is often the easiest, uh, the phone number that is there and the audio PIN code. So with that, I will hand it over to Mark. Welcome, Mark. Hey, good evening, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Uh, excited that uh, I have an opportunity to share Cup Crafters and the information that I have, and I want to welcome the listeners. And uh, once again, I want to point out uh, we chose Social Flight uh, for the reasons that you mentioned. Uh, it's free. Aviators like stuff that's free. But uh, all that information that's going on in your local area is readily available. And I check my Social Flight uh, account a couple times a week, see what's going on close to me. Uh, allows me to meet up and hook up with um, other aviators that are interested in doing the same types of things that Cub Crafters is. So. Uh, I want to give uh, Social Flight a plug there, thank them for having us, and uh, looking forward to a good evening, so thanks. Um, so a little bit about my background. Uh, as Jeff mentioned earlier, I am the regional sales manager for Cub Crackers. I handle the Northeast and the Great Lakes territories. Uh, for those of you that are familiar, uh, I'm covering uh, Wisconsin, the northern uh, quarter of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, all points east and northeast. And we're also handling the southeastern provinces of Canada, east of Manitoba. So uh, a big, vast area and uh, something we're quite excited about because of the backcountry flying we do. Uh, these are uh, great territories for that. So a um, little bit about my background. Uh, spent 25 years in sales and marketing. Uh, brought that uh, to the table with Cub Crafters. Uh, they found that that could be useful in building what we call our user community. And uh, uh, as you've heard, and if this is your first time with Social Flight, uh, that's exactly what Jeff and his team are doing. He's building the user community in Social Flight. Uh, people that are like-minded aviators want to get together and do things. And uh, I think most of you would probably agree uh, I know for me personally, I haven't met anybody in aviation yet that I haven't liked. Uh, they're just all great people and um, happy to have the same interest in doing things. So um, I do have a background in avionics. Uh, got that from the U.S. Navy. Thank you very much. Um, spent a few years with them uh, working on the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy. Uh, I was a eye-level guy, so in the shop working on circuit boards, things like this. Um, and then uh, from there, I went to Purdue University, and that's where I got my, uh, my education, sales and marketing, uh, leadership experience, those types of things. Uh, fast forward a little bit, um, 25 years spent, as I said, in sales and marketing, primarily in the automobile industry. 
working with companies like BMW, uh, Porsche, Mercedes-Benz, Toyota, uh, and doing work with them. Uh, 43 years of flying, as Jeff mentioned, uh, all started with flying with my dad in uh, the Adirondacks. Uh, he had two J3 Cubs, um, and uh, that's what, really where I started. We would fly into lakes and ponds and rivers in the Adirondack Park, and uh, my dad was also in sales. So after spending uh, uh, the week in front of customers, it was uh, his release, and uh, maybe a lot of you can relate to that. Uh, flying gives you that opportunity, whether you do it with somebody or or you do it alone, it's your opportunity to get out there and enjoy and, uh, and uh, have some fun. So, um, grew up in upstate New York. Um, I currently own that J3 that I learned to fly in years ago. Uh, it left the family for a little while. Um, the owner of Perone Leather, Perone Aviation Leather, in fact, bought that airplane years ago from my dad. And uh, I was fortunate enough to buy that back. Uh, today, I fly it on floats in the Adirondacks with my own family. Um, currently working on a 56 Champ 7 ECA uh, that I hope to have ready by the summer. And um, have several hundred hours flying in these airplanes. So, uh, when the opportunity came to go to work with Cub Crafters, it seemed like a natural fit. And uh, so, I guess you could say the rest is history. And, and here we are now. So, tonight's meeting is more than anything just about. Uh, sharing what I know about Cub Crafters, uh, the products that we have, the services that we offer, and I'd like to share a little bit about that with you. Um, primarily the history of Cub Crafters. Um, Cub Crafters was started in 1980. Uh, the founder of the company, Jim Richmond, who currently owns the company today, it's a solely owned uh, company. He uh, spent a lot of time in Alaska flying with the airplanes up there. And as you can see by the slide, there's a, there's a little history there of where we started. And he really started just uh, fixing and repairing uh, the Super Cub, probably the best known airplane for uh, backcountry flying uh, to date. Um, made repairs on that, became the industry expert very quickly, uh, putting Super Cubs back together, repairing them, fixing them. And um, in fact, he bought four surplus Super Cubs uh, from Italy, and that's really how he got the business started. Uh, had one or two of them sold uh, even before he got them together. So um, his background in, in in the cub industry is probably better than anybody else's, and I think you'll find as we go along here through the slide, um, Cub Crafters has either built, repaired, reassembled more uh, Super Cubs, J3s, Carbon Cubs, than anybody in the world. So um, in 1999, you can see uh, Cub Crafters had their, their first airplane, the Sport Cub. Um, and then they brought out their first certified airplane, the Top Cub. Uh, the Top Cub is a Part 23 airplane, um, heavier gross weight, uh, probably the true end-all, be-all bush backcountry airplane. You can put a lot of weight in this airplane. Uh, powered with a 180 horsepower light combing engine, a uh, variety of avionics that you can put in this airplane. Uh, it's certified with Whipline Amphibious 2100A floats. If you wanted to put it on floats, you could do that. Um, and that's an airplane that we still produce today. Um, it's used a great deal um, by the government, as a matter of fact, out west. And um, there's a fair amount of people that need a utility airplane like that still up in Canada and Alaska. Um, moving forward to around the uh, 2006 time frame is when we uh, introduced the uh, S1 and S2 Cub. Uh, that was uh, our light sport airplane uh, powered with a 0200 engine, 100 horsepower. This was our, our first uh, venture, I guess you'd say, into the light sport category. Um, again, those airplanes, there's several of them out on the market. In fact, we just got one in that uh, we're going to have for sale here shortly in the Northeast. Uh, it's a 200 hour airplane, so for anybody interested in the light sport, uh, we have one of those gorgeous airplanes. Um, 2009, the Carbon Cub came online. This is probably the airplane that uh, uh, set the mark. I think for Cub Crafters, uh, very lightweight, 
uh, still in the LSA category uh, or even ELSA category uh, with 180 horsepower, and that's for a maximum of five minutes in takeoff. Uh, has flaps. Uh, you can see that airplane uh, in the pictures here uh, as we move along. That airplane, um, with the right guy at the stick, can take off in 75 feet, land in two or 300 feet, and that makes the capability for backcountry flying um, pretty impressive with that one. Um, along about the same time, we started offering that airplane in the EX, or uh, what we call the kit. And today, customers can still go right online on our website if they're interested in a carbon cub that they want to build themselves. Uh, certainly, you can do that. Uh, the EX is available. And then we also have the EX2, which has uh, our latest G-Series flaps and ailerons, which come from uh, the X-Cub, which I'll get to shortly. Um, moving on, along about 2015, we started what we call the Builder Assist Program, or the FX, Carbon Cub FX. Uh, that airplane has probably more interest right now, uh, or at least equal interest with the X-Cub. Uh, customers like the idea of being able to go out to our factory, uh, spend five days out there. You're working with the people in the factory, uh, milling parts, using our CNC machines, our hot stamping those types of things to make your parts. And then what our factory does is we build your airplane for you. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to self-inspect your airplane. Uh, you've gone out there, you've built 51% of the airplane per the FAA's requirements, and now the factory is using the parts that you, you manufactured to build your airplane. You make another trip out there, uh, you do some test flying in the airplane, and then you're ready to go home with it. And then probably last uh, in our chart here, as you'll see the timeline, uh, the X-Cub came online early last summer, 2016. Currently, this airplane uh, makes up the bulk of our production. It's uh, sold out right through November at this time. Uh, we probably will sell out of that airplane before we even get to Oshkosh this year. But this is the airplane that made the headlines all over the aviation magazines, the news, things like that. It's a true 180 horsepower airplane. It's another Part 23 certified airplane for us. Constant speed prop. Um, has a gross weight of about 2,300 pounds, and it flies at a top speed at close to 150 miles an hour. Um, and it's probably the most stable airplane you can imagine being at 150 miles an hour in a Cub. Uh, likewise, it has all the slow flight characteristics that our Carbon Cub has. And this has been a very, very popular airplane for us since it's come out. So um, that gives you a little bit of the timeline. Um, where we are, we do have uh, new products on the table right now. I'm not really at liberty to discuss those, but if you're following Cub Crafters, you know that uh, they're always innovating and developing new products. And I expect by June, uh, the general pub public will have uh, information on our two newest airplanes. Uh, I can tell you they're very exciting. They're not uh, necessarily uh, extensions of another airplane that we had. So uh, I'll leave you with that information and you can keep watching our website because that information will be out in June. Um, as far as what we do, uh, we don't necessarily just uh, build and develop airplanes. We also have a full service facility. Uh, Cub Crafter Services uh, will take uh, any Super Cub, any Piper Cub, um, and if you want it completely rebuilt, you can do that. If you want to have general services done, you can do that. We also have a tremendous parts department. Uh, there's many STCs. In fact, Cub Crafters and Jim have more STCs for the Super Cub than anybody else in the world. So if you need uh, a new development or an add-on for your current Super Cub, uh, we're probably the place to look. Um, moving along, uh, as I mentioned, the parts department, services department. Um, most recently, about a year ago or so, uh, we also added TAC Arrow. 
Tac Arrow is a flight training facility in Hood River, Oregon, um, and we have contracted with them for uh, flight services. Um, we have, as you might imagine, a lot of varying experiences of people that uh, come online, buy one of our airplanes, but maybe maybe they do have a lot of tailwheel experience, and it could be in a, a Cetabria or uh, a Christian Eagle or, or something else, but our airplanes are much different. Uh, as I mentioned to you, they take off very, very quickly. Uh, they have a very, very steep climb rate. Uh, you can climb in a carbon cub at 2,000 feet per minute at 50 miles an hour and stay there all day if you wish. So they have tremendous capabilities. Um, so Tech Arrow teaches people uh, how to best utilize this airplane. And not everybody's going to go to the back country with it. We understand that. But if you want to get proficient in flying your new Carbon Cub or your new X Cub uh, or your new Top Cub, then uh, Tech Arrow is the place that we use uh, and uh, most highly recommend. So uh, I want to give them a little plug because they're doing a great job for us. In fact, many of our X Cub customers uh, have signed on with them for a week-long training. And they also extend uh, to bush training as well. Uh, some highly qualified backcountry people leading that program with uh, Jeremy and Scott. Um, so moving along, uh, as many of you know, if, if you follow uh, my blog on the Cub Crafters website or even uh, our forums, um, when I went to work for Cub Crafters last fall, uh, one of the things that I did is I went out to the factory and lived and worked there for about a month. But um, at the end of that time frame, uh, there was one airplane that needed to be delivered to Houston, and of course, I had to find my way back to Saratoga, New York. And they wanted me to have a demonstrator airplane out here uh, in Saratoga. So the, really the only way to get it there was to um, fly it back here myself. So having never flown across the Rockies, uh, I'm not afraid to say that I didn't have the experience that so many other people do uh, flying at high altitude like that uh, over desolate uh, country, uh, that could be a little daunting. Uh, everybody's heard about high winds at 12,000 feet in those mountains and so forth. So uh, to say I wasn't intimidated would be, uh, would be uh, grossly wrong. So, so that trip uh, was about a six-day trip. Uh, the effort was to try to get home by Christmas. And uh, as I said, we took another airplane to Houston. And uh, a fellow that I work with, uh, he heads up our FX build program out in Yakima. His name's Max. Uh, he took the airplane, and I, I chased along with him. I guess he was my guide dog is what I'd like to say. Uh, great guy. He took us uh, down out of Oregon um, through Idaho. And there's, there's a typical route that these guys follow when they go through the mountain passes. And uh, that's something that I learned along the way. But um, followed along through Idaho down into Wyoming. And I have to say, some of, some of that area, there's miles and miles and miles of nothing. Uh, the wilderness is beautiful. Uh, you can see all kinds of wildlife and those types of things. Uh, but I, I was really awestruck the whole time I was flying and uh, amazed to see that, you know, once you get up that high with the winds there, uh, at some points in the airplane I was flying that normally cruises at 105 or 110 miles an hour, we were seeing ground speeds close to 180. So uh, clearly the winds can get uh, can get pretty high up there. So we, we progressed our way down and uh, stayed in Wyoming the first night. Um, and, and that was a good experience. You know, you, you go into these airports, as, as so many of you do, if, if you ever stayed overnight any of these places these people um, they really know how to take care of people the the hometown service I guess is what I would consider best at airports better than any place else um, they find a way to make sure that you have transportation recommend you to the best restaurants uh, give you the discounts for the hotels just because you flew into their airport so they're very helpful they're very knowledgeable of their area and and uh, I think that's something that you don't find in, in a lot of other industries. So that was pretty much day one, getting to Wyoming. Uh, as day two started, uh, 
still getting south further, uh, finished out our, our leg through Wyoming, then we had to head down the eastern edge of Colorado and then uh, slowly made our way into Oklahoma. Oklahoma was uh, our second stop, as I recall. Um, things flatten out in a hurry once you get out of Colorado. So um, wasn't wasn't much to describe there other than it's flat. Uh, there are some interesting designs. I will say this: there's some interesting designs, um, you know, in the landscapes there with the the farms and uh, the ranches that people have, things like that. But it's just vast and it's flat and uh, and it's pretty cool all at the same time. Because as I mentioned, it's a, a first time trip for me. Um, day three, we managed to make our way. Uh, down through uh, Oklahoma and into northern Texas, we did have to make a, uh, a minor stop because we had a, uh, uh, a small issue, or what we thought was a small issue, wound up being nothing but uh, a loose wire connection. And uh, we stopped at a shop that Max was familiar with. A friend of his there uh, fixed it in less than an hour, and we were back on our way. Uh, we flew down through uh, Dallas airspace. Um, some of you may or may not be intimidated with that, uh, the big, heavy air traffic space, but um, I, I have to say I have a little experience in, in big metro areas there, but not a lot. And so a lot of things come at you real quick. And um, Max would be the first one to tell you that I wasn't as polished as maybe what I'd hoped I was. But uh, we made our way through it, and it was just fine. So we did the delivery down there, stayed in the... Stayed in Houston is where we stayed, delivered the airplane. Uh, nice fellow down there. Uh, that was on Wednesday, and uh, I was leaving Houston by, oh, I suppose, maybe 10 a.m., uh, and my first stop was to be um, in uh, Smyrna, Tennessee. And uh, what I didn't know and I, I probably didn't expect and I didn't see it in any notams or anything, but there was a great deal of burning going on through Louisiana. Uh, again, it's flat. Uh, the air is a little thicker and heavier down there just because it's closer to water, and some people were burning, and the, the smoke just lays low, and it spreads out for what seemed like 60 or 70 miles. So to either go up and over that or uh, down low probably weren't good options. So... Uh, I chose to go around it, took me a little bit out of my way, burned a little company gas, but uh, I felt it was safer. So um, made my way into Tennessee. Um, again, a uh, good trip in there. Uh, I arrived very late. It was getting dark, and uh, I suppose I arrived just in time because uh, 10 minutes later they were shutting that airport down for uh, construction work on the runways. That wasn't something that I saw either in Notum. So um, I guess it's probably better if you're going to make a trip like that that uh, maybe you call the airfield and ask for the local information because, as I found out, all the information isn't necessarily on the Notum. So uh, just a word to the wise. Um, so that that was my, uh, my fourth day there. Uh, started my fifth day, and the weather changed quickly, um, making my way... Uh, through uh, Kentucky, uh, leaving Tennessee into Kentucky, uh, West Virginia, and the weather just dropped right down. The winds picked up real heavy. Uh, I think I was making at some point 65, 70 miles an hour across the ground. I didn't get very far, and uh, my nerves honestly got a little rattled too because uh, the company has some established minimums, and probably the guys with more experience are or have a little more flexibility with those minimums, but uh, I was always told uh, to keep in mind it's it's not your airplane you're flying, so uh, have to take care of the company property, but also take care of myself. And so when the visibility got, I don't know, down around six, seven, eight hundred feet, and uh, uh, the visibility's, I don't know, three miles, that's that's below my comfort range. So. Uh, mentally, I had to decompress, so I, I landed at a, a small airfield and uh, just waited it out a little bit, and it improved. Uh, the winds died a little bit, visibility improved, ceiling raised, 
and uh, I was able to get on my way. And I, I made the fifth day to uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia, and um, stayed there for the night. Um, was able to go out and do a little Christmas shopping, decompress, and uh, and that was a good night's sleep there as well. Um, the last day, uh, got up pretty early, was leaving um, Parkersburg, and the route, if you see on the map there, the route took me up towards uh, um, Pennsylvania, right over Lock Haven, as a matter of fact. Um, for those Cub enthusiasts, that's where the Piper Cub started, was in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. And so that was pretty cool to fly over that. It's all covered in snow. And then uh, made my way to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is home to the Little League World Series. And uh, I'm well familiar with that area because my son's a baseball player. So uh, made that one of my fuel stops. And, and since that first trip, I've made three or four other trips. Uh, and always stop in Williamsport because it just seems to be right along the route. And uh, they're nice people there. And uh, I recommend their services highly. So uh, I left Williamsport, headed north. Uh, I was going up towards uh, Binghamton. All of this is uh, pretty familiar territory with me now. Um, made my way over Cooperstown. Had a friend of mine that uh, lives and works in that area. And we fly a fair amount together. And uh, just did a little fly over his house. And then it's, you know, 15, 20 minutes to, to get to my home base. Uh, I flew over my mom's house just to let her know I was uh, back home safe and sound and uh, took it into Saratoga, and, and that was it. I think I arrived in Saratoga 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon that day. And and so that that was the trip. Um, I uh, I would invite everybody to uh, to get out and, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, spread your wings a little bit, but do something out of your comfort zone. Um, as, I, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm in the uh, Akron, Canton, Ohio airport, uh, I just got off a flight here. I'm picking up a carbon cub out here and flying it back to Saratoga tomorrow. Uh, it's about 430 miles, but uh, I've got two or three customers out here that I want to stop and show this airplane to. They might not necessarily be interested in this airplane, but uh, they haven't seen a carbon cub or, or don't know what it's about, so they might have an interest in a kit or something of this nature. So we're going to stop and visit those people while we're out here. And then uh, we'll make our, our way home before dark uh, tomorrow night. So um, other than that, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on with Cub Crafters. Uh, you guys probably all know uh, we're going to be at Sun and Fun along with probably 500 other companies uh, starting uh, a week from next Tuesday. It's uh, the 4th to the 9th. We have uh, a lot of big events scheduled throughout the year. Uh, me personally, I'll be at Sun and Fun. We're flying uh, our Carbon Cub FX down there from Saratoga to Florida uh, starting next Friday. That's about a uh, 10, 10 and a half hour trip down there. I don't think I'll be able to do it in a whole day, uh, but I'm certainly going to try. Um, and then after, uh, after that, uh, between uh, Cub Crafters and our home base at Saratoga, we're going to sponsor a Rusty Pilots uh, seminar. Uh, and what we're trying to do is just uh, build enthusiasm for aviation, but but also build uh, our user community. Uh, that's a that's a Cub Crafters term, user community. That's one of the things that they tasked me to do uh, when I started with the company. Come out here is uh, try to get aviation enthusiasts, backcountry flyers, and we really don't care whether they. They fly uh, a Carbon Cub, a J3, a Satabria, a Champ. Uh, we just want to get these people together and uh, start enjoying the, the environment. Um, we've got a lot of cool places that we go. They're not all uh, paved 3,000, 4,000 foot strips, I have to tell you. They're uh, kind of out of the way. They're fields, uh, they're riverbeds, they're mountainous areas. And uh, in some cases, because guys have floats, uh, we're going to ponds and streams and lakes. But there's something particularly cool about getting a group of people together uh, that are like-minded uh, and just fly through this uh, this territory and um, experience different things together. And uh, it's it's very common for us 
Uh, I mentioned the guy in Cooperstown. There's four or five other guys that get together. But one guy will bring dinner, one guy will bring beer, another gal may bring breakfast. It's just all these people are getting together and chipping in, and, and it's a great time. So um, as we go along here, I'm going to encourage all of you folks to, to join uh, Cub Crafters Forum to find out what's going on uh, in our territory, what we're doing. Uh, also, if you're not part of uh, supercub.org, that's another great forum that you should be involved with. Uh, all these people that I talk about getting together with, they're generally on these forums. They're generally making plans together. And uh, they're flying as often as possible. So that's a lot of fun as well. So uh, the Rusty Pilot Seminar, that's April uh, 15th. It's a Saturday. It's from 9 to noon. Uh, going forward after that, uh, on uh, May 13th, uh, Cub Crafters, here in the Northeast is going to have um, a uh, fly-in breakfast. We're calling it Valdez Day because that's the exact day that the uh, uh, Alaskan Valdez short takeoff and landing competition is taking place up in Valdez, Alaska. So that should be an exciting event because I'm going to have a wire feed live uh, from Valdez with all the activities going on up there. So I'm expecting a good turnout that's going to be a, a fly-in breakfast at the Saratoga County Airport. Um, then in uh, June, you're going to be able to find us down at Lock Haven for Sentimental Journey. We're going to be down there. Um, July, obviously, uh, is a big month in aviation. We're going to be out uh, at Oshkosh. Uh, right now, I'm looking for people to fly both uh, to Florida. If anybody's interested in, in tagging along, flying down to Florida for Sun and Fun, um, trying to get some flyers together for that, but also for Oshkosh. That's going to be a good trip. We might make uh, a two- or three-day uh, adventure getting out there, probably two at this point, I'd say. And then um, after uh, Oshkosh, we've got uh, the Moosehead Lake uh, fly-in. That'll be in September up in Greenville, Maine, the International Seaplane Fly-in. And, um, oh, I forgot one. Ah, yes, in, in late August, uh, myself and Cub Crafters, we're going to sponsor a fly-out um, you can watch for this on the forum. If, if you're interested, you can uh, email me or, or get my phone number and call me. But uh, we're going to do a flyout probably up in Vermont. Looks like right now we're either going to be based at Basin Harbor on Lake Champlain or uh, Sugar Bush Ski Resort in the uh, Warren County Airport uh, up in Sugar Bush, Vermont. What we'll do is we'll fly up there, uh, get everybody together. Um, probably be on a uh, Friday evening, have dinner together, stay the night, uh, try to organize a fly out for the next day, different sights and sounds, go places, have lunch, and just uh, fly around through the north country, the Green Mountains, might even get over to New Hampshire, check some things out over there, and then come back that evening, uh, back to our base, do the same thing all over again, and then maybe head a different direction, maybe head west over towards the Adirondacks and, and mill through there. So. All this is in an effort to uh, get people together, um, spend time together, fly your airplane, enjoy it, uh, meet some new friends, and uh, yes, eventually, uh, maybe you will buy a carbon cup from us. So uh, that could happen as well. Um, I want to mention that uh, in um, Connecticut, the Sinsbury Flying, it's a one-day event. It's Sunday, uh, September 17th. We'll be down there for the day. Uh, I understand that's quite a fly-in. I have not been to that, but uh, we're going to go this year and check that out. And then um, in the beginning of October, of course, everybody knows that uh, AOPA is going to have their uh, their flying event. That This year for the Northeast is going to be in Groton, Connecticut, and that's uh, Friday, October 6th, and Saturday the 7th. So um, if you want to see a carbon cub, uh, you can certainly go to any of those events because I'll be there. But uh, also I want to mention we have uh, what we're calling uh, Display Day. And there's been uh, seven or maybe eight people that have been kind enough to share either their, their existing airplane that they bought or I've got a couple of fellows that are in the process of building a uh, Carbon Cub EX and they're happy to share that as well. 
So that's happening this Saturday. And, and I thought of this idea because there's people all throughout the territory that um, don't know what Cub Crafters is all about, may have questions, <clears throat> but more times than not, they want to see and touch and, and, and learn all about it. So uh, these people uh, this Saturday, all at the same time, are going to be uh, displaying their carbon cub. And if you're close to one of these areas, why well, uh, you can look them up or, or just go to that airport and check it out. So uh, I will be in Saratoga, New York on Saturday. Uh, the identifier for that is 5 Bravo 2. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Pete Meyer, uh, he's going to be displaying his carbon cub at uh, Whiskey 1 8. Uh, Jim Crane, will be displaying his at uh, 2 Bravo 7. And then a gentleman by the name of Paul Morrell is going to be displaying his carbon cub at Mike Echo 3-2. And then believe it or not, uh, even though we're way out east, uh, I had a guy contact me through the forum who's from California. His name's Steve Young. And he's been nice enough to show his carbon cub out in Southern California in the the identifier for that is uh, Kilo Tango Romeo Mike. So uh, that's what's that's what's going on recently with Cub Crafters with me, um, and I want to I want to thank uh, Jeff and Social Play for giving me the opportunity to get on here. Hopefully, we can get on here again with Jeff and uh, and share uh, more information. I will tell you, there's uh, as I said, there's stuff coming up online in June. Um, for those of you following the X-Cub, uh, that airplane will be certified with uh, WIP 2100 floats, it sounds like here real quick, amphibious. So that's pretty cool. And uh, there's some, uh, some other interesting things going on with X-Cub as well. But uh, I can't get into those right now because uh, they're not authorized and they're not approved by the FAA. But it's pretty exciting stuff, and I encourage all of you to watch it. So. With that, I'd like to hand, hand it back over to Jeff. Uh, I thought we'd do a question and answer thing here. If I can answer it, I will. If I can't, uh, I'll be honest with you. I can get the information and get back to you. But, Jeff, uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Um, hey, so can you give us an idea of some of the price points of the aircraft going across there? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, from an affordability standpoint, um, Probably our Carbon Cub EX kit is the, is the most affordable airplane to get into as a new aircraft. Um, routinely, we're selling these airplanes uh, as a kit around 160000 150000 We did one uh, last month with uh, Aeroset Amphib floats that was 178000 Now, keep in mind, this is a kit. Uh, it's an EAB, which means Experimental Amateur Built Airplane. It's the exact same airplane that we build out at the factory. It's just stuffed in a box in pieces, and you're going to put the, put it together. And and that's a great great opportunity for people to learn uh, the intricacies, the workings of the airplane, how it all goes together. But it also gives them an opportunity to uh, you know self inspect the airplane as well as far as maintenance goes. That's probably the most and, affordable one. Go ahead. And and on that that aircraft, uh, what is it? What, what comes with that, or what kind of options exist for it? Um, well, all the same options. For example, that be able to... for example, I'm assuming it comes with the engine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have uh, three different kits. We have a wing kit. We have a paint uh, and covering kit. Um, we have the fuselage kit. And then, yes, you can uh, buy the engine. Highly recommend that. But there's different avionics options that you can order. And these are all on our website. Um, if you go to the uh, the EX uh, section of our website, we have a very, very well done website with uh, uh, interactive ordering system where you can get right on there. You can choose your colors. You can choose your equipment, avionics, seats, leather, cloth, uh, engine, propeller. Do you want floats? Do you want 29-inch bush wheels? Do you want 26-inch bush wheels? Um, so that that's a that's a cool website and a cool tool to use. Is there a um, um, builder assist program, Mark? Right. Yep. The uh, the builder assist I mentioned mentioned earlier called the uh, FX. Um, that's essentially uh, our carbon cub, but with uh, some cool standard features. For instance, long range tanks, 44 gallons of fuel. 
uh, with 40 usable. Those would be standard in the FX. That's the airplane I mentioned. You'd go out to the factory on two different trips for a total of seven days. You stay right there. You get your hands dirty. Uh, it's a work day. Every day is a work day out there. So um, you would be involved in that. And uh, that's our builder assist program. That, that airplane is uh, a little more expensive just because of what goes along with it. Obviously, you're staying out there. Um, it doesn't necessarily slow down production, but obviously we have to take time and uh, show you how to work machines and push buttons and do measurements and things like that. But you're involved in, like I said, stamping parts. Uh, you can get involved in uh, carbon fiber injection molding. Uh, all those things uh, you would be doing out there to uh, total 51% of your build. So uh, that airplane, as far as price point, um, probably going to be in the range of 260 to 280,000 right now if you got involved in the FX program. Uh, but a great, great experience. And I think if you talk to any of our FX customers, they would all tell you that it's a tremendous experience. They love their airplane, and uh, they're happy to be a part of the build. Okay, and moving up the line in terms of uh, price? It, yeah, moving up the line, um, we, we actually skipped one. The EX uh, was the first, but then the Carbon Cub, which is the uh, factory-built airplane, um, that's probably in your two, 245 to 265 range. Uh, then the uh, FX, and then um, the Top Cub, and then the uh, X Cub. The Top Cub and the X Cub, as I mentioned earlier, are Part 23 airplanes. They're certified airplanes by the FAA. Um, those airplanes cost a little bit more because guess what? The FAA uh, charges quite a bit of money for all the testing that they require. So um, that all comes out in the wash eventually. And uh, But it's pretty cool uh, because of what they do and, and how it gets done. So um, the, the top cub... Um, probably in the 230, 240 range, and the X-Cub, I think, has a base price of right around $298,000. Um, most of them that have been sold recently, I think, are selling for right around three hundred and twenty to 330000 and, and, of course, if you add amphibious floats, it's, uh, it's real close to 400000 But in an airplane that you can load right up, go 145 miles an hour with, and and if you need to, uh, you can uh, dial back your fuel consumption, and that airplane has uh, close to a 900-mile nautical range. So it's probably even closer to 1,000, I guess, is how we're advertising. So that's pretty impressive Excellent. for a Cub, I have to say. And, and it's absolutely incredibly impressive. And uh, and so for those of us who are going to be down at Sun and Fun, tell us where how we find you down at Sun and Fun. Well, uh, we're going to head down there three or four days early. Uh, I'm going to be helping uh, our our marketing guy uh, get everything set up down there. I've not done that before with them, so they want to have uh, another set of hands. Obviously, it's a, a big undertaking, so having an extra set of hands is good. But also, um, there's been just one guy responsible for that in the past, so it's nice to have somebody else uh, learn that, the experience, where things are stored. We don't move, I, I didn't know this, but we don't move everything from Yakima, Washington down there. They actually have a storage facility down there where they keep everything that they're going to use for promoting in the show and things like that. So um, we'll have a big, big booth tent area set up down there. As I understand it right now, I think we're going to have uh, – four or five airplanes down there, including the X-Cub. Uh, the FX is going to be down there. I know we're going to have a couple carbon cubs down there. Um, we are going to have Camp Cub Crafters again in the evening. Um, that's the uh, off-site uh, airfield that we go to, and we take uh, interested customers out there and, and do demo flights with them. So um, I'm looking forward to that experience, setting it all up, getting involved, and uh, looking forward to the trip as well. Excellent. Well, thank you, Mark. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. And uh, as I mentioned, there will be a uh, recording that we'll be making available uh, that we'll get an email that will give you a link to that. 
And we'd certainly appreciate everyone checking out Social Flight and spreading the word. Again, it's completely free. We're here to support general aviation in the same way that Cub Crafters does. That's why it's such a great partnership. And thank you all, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much, Jeff.